Most people in America are familiar with what their rights are and are not when it comes time to visiting someone that they know. We also know what the laws are regarding strangers entering someone's home without lawful consent. When we're out camping in a campground, there are some standard social mores and social etiquette and social protocols that most people truly expect others to follow, such as we do not enter into someone's camper without permission. We do not walk into someone's tent when they're there or even not there. We are expecting that people regard our property and our possessions, and when they don't, it's considered a felony. When I stay at night, especially as it's gotten colder, I put myself into a tent-like structure. I do this carefully with the rollator cart that I utilize to move myself about with my blankets for myself and my upcoming family that I've been saving things for and testing local organizations and charities against. Because in the early days of getting together, we may be on a budget. So I need to know whether or not these organizations that promise food to people, the food pantries, can actually do their job. The liars of America like to solicit. They like to be improper. They like to lie to themselves about their rights. They like to eavesdrop. They like to piss on people. They like to steal from people. They like to lie about who they are in every way. And they do so almost every day. The liars of America try to get close to people that don't want anything to do with them because they're not on their life course. They're not a part of their career path. They're not even close to their profession or their standards or their education. And it doesn't mean that people cannot learn from people out of indigency or poverty. It doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that most professional people have a standard of etiquette and a standard expectation that once they put themselves down for the night, once they put themselves in a tent or a tent-like structure or awning, they expect that no one is going to enter in. What I find amazing to me is that I have pretty much tried to close off my tent to the best of my abilities at night so that no one will enter in on me other than possibly a upcoming spouse that I have chosen, not that someone else has chosen for me. And in reality, I have two or three special friends like that that would be welcome in my tent to peek their head and say, hey, are you awake? Or hey, I'm here, wake up. But people who've been entering my tent are intentionally not waking me, and they are intentionally opening my personal property bags and stealing things out of actual smaller bags within those bags. They are taking my cuffs that I buy from the Dollar Tree and they're resizing them to make them more strangulation on me. And I don't appreciate that. They have lied about their rights to do things. They have lied about their, their abilities to do things. They are constantly harassing, haranguing because of some bitch who thought she would get into my bags and start promoting me as if she had rights to me. She has no rights to me. I am not a slave of her environment. I am not a slave to her and her husband. I am not a slave to her and her social network. I am not a slave to anybody. I am a professional man who lost his life totally different than most of these people here, which makes it difficult sometimes to have educational conversations. But some people in this community are of an educated background and they show me regard and respect. But other people don't. They like to play the, I can be as sweet as pie to you, but I'm going to screw you at night type of mentality. And we don't do that where I come from. People have an expectation that when a door, a tent, a awning is closed off, it means do not enter in. But more importantly, it also means by practicality of the law, you don't have the right to put your hands in somebody's bags that are zipped closed. You don't have the right to move them out of the way to take their clothing. I've had a new pair of pants that were filthy by far and about to be hand washed by me completely stolen from my bags. They were extra large and I guarantee they smelled like blood, they smelled like urine because I have some incontinence and I have some other things that go on with, well, bloody stools and me and that's just the way it goes. That's what happens when you go through the aging process. You can't always expect that you're going to be perfect health for the rest of your life and in my case so many people have tried to monkey in on my health care that was absolutely prime for my cellular health 
that they have violated federal law, they've abused their rights to my records and my medical situation, and openly I'm going to sue them all personally. Because at no time did I authorize or accept them as any medical practitioner or clinician for me. Now, in our communities, we have social workers that often bend the rules of society. We have people in our communities that often abuse their rights to you and me. Meaning they see someone in struggle and instead of talking to them, the individual of, of, of interest in their mind, they go around them. They lie to themselves about their rights to call people, do things, try to solicit people to come out and see them, and it's immoral. You have no right to enter into that person's life, especially if you are an employee of a company where someone is shopping regularly. There are all kinds of people in the world. There are people that go to a daily shop every day or a shop every day. And there are other people that go to a shop once a week, once a month, and that's everyone's choice in the world. But when we're talking about privacy rights, when we're talking about consumer rights, when we're talking about medical rights, when we're talking about mobility rights, when we're talking about transportation rights, when we're talking about civil rights, what we're really talking about is what matters to most people in the world. People want the freedom and the power to make decisions for their life, and it fucking pisses me off that a pair of pants I was just about to wash for my life has been changed out and a smaller pair of pants have been placed in my bag without my lawful consent. I am offended by that individual. I am insulted by that person's mentality that they thought they had some right to enter a closed tent while I'm sleeping and enter my property bags that are clipped closed to keep them closed and when I go shopping and other things in my travels, as you know, and someone thought they had the right to take my clothing, rip it, resize it, and do all sorts of things to it. They stole my underwear. I had a black pair of underwear. Those have been stolen from me. Who the hell are you to do that to me? Now, in life, we have morality and we have immorality. And I strung up some things on my pack today very carefully, and when I came to it, here late in the day, I found that somebody had already monkeyed with it and played with it. You see, in life, we have to know where our boundaries begin and end, and it is an immoral act against the human being for you to think you have the right to touch one thing without lawful permission and consent. It is a form of propriety. It is a social construct in our society. It is the law, motherfuckers, that you don't have the right to steal from me or anyone else. But we seem to have people coming in from foreign lands, foreign nations, and even people who live right here as American citizens that don't get that they are not welcome to do that. 